very good Saturday evening to all our viewers. First and foremost, Eid Mubarak to all our Muslim devotees. I'm Joel Outskun. Let's start off tonight with a look at the headlines. SB reveals the masterminds behind the bond scam. The fate of the wild elephants in the country. Transport Ministry to bring a major transport company into the country. All five Sri Lankan cricketers who were invited by the minister refuse us to join the SLC as consultants. That on private hospitals to be removed from next week. Starting off with our lead story this evening, now Minister of Wildlife and Sustainable Development Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca says that he did not receive any instructions from the President to cease the operations to remove the two wild elephants from the Singharaja forest, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Minister made this statement following an event held in Andhradhapura today. <laughs> When I was on my way back yesterday, the president spoke to me and I informed him of the problem. The president asked me only one question. Veterinary surgeons say that if the elephants are relocated to Horopathana, the weather will affect them. I told him that we will be taking the elephants for only two months and the area of 50 acres will be made within the Singharaja forest itself. I told him that if the elephants continue to be there, they will soon become victims of the Hakkabatas or a local hunting gun. Then, no one will be responsible for the lives of these elephants. Then I arranged two veterinarians from Colombo to take up this responsibility. Some say Nandanathapattu is corrupt. Though there are veterinarians at the wildlife department, without employing them, why are we employing the services of Nandanathapattu? How much do you pay him? The veterinarians of our department halted their trade union action when they heard that the team, including Nandanathapattu, was going to do this. Now they are volunteering. We have not spoken about money yet. Singharaja Forest is a world heritage. If the elephants are removed from there, it would be taken out from the world heritage category. What do you say about this? Before being removed from the category, if UNESCO is giving me a promise that the elephants will not die and that there won't be any human deaths in Singharaja, then I will accept the story of the world heritage. If they can't give us that promise, then we cannot accept what they say. Director General of Wildlife of the Uwa and Southern Provinces, Prasan Vimaladasa, continued to observe the situation and he noted that the two elephants are currently located in the Bodhiathana area close to the border of the Singharaja Reserve. Yesterday we heard that they are trying to shoot one of the elephants by going against the orders of the president. We have got information that a certain deputy minister is involved. They would say that we told to remove the elephant, you didn't do it. And now the elephant is being shot. They are trying to take some political revenge through this innocent elephant. This is the unfortunate situation at present. <laughs> Wildlife conservation does not happen by keeping an elephant in the manner in which we keep a cat or a dog. Their knowledge in the matter is at a very low level. Wildlife conservation or environment conservation does not mean removing the animal from its natural habitat and placing it in captivity. A minister who is appointed to the ministry that manages a department that functions on the scientific foundation of wildlife conservation should have some knowledge about this subject. The fact that such a person not been appointed is evident in these wrong decisions. In the world of sports, now the start of play on day three of the second test between West Indies and uh, Sri Lanka in St. Lucia was delayed after the umpires decided to change the ball ahead of the start of the play due to ball tampering concerns which resulted in the Sri Lankan players refusing to take the field. Now, visuals of the umpire Ian asking uh, to Dananjaya de Silva's hands were seen from last evening after he found uh, shining the ball with bandages wrapping around his hands. A few minutes later, the umpire checked the shape of the ball with the use of the rings to check the shape of the ball and was seen speaking to Sri Lankan skipper Dinesh Chandimal. It is understood that the umpires took this scenario into consideration and decided to change the ball, which didn't go 
down well with the Sri Lankan players and the management. Now, Sri Lanka coach Chandik Hathrasinghe was also seen speaking to the match referee Jawahal Srinath as play was continued to be held up, creating dramatic scenes to what was turning out to be an evenly fought test match. After much deliberation, it was decided that play is to resume at 10.50 a.m. West Indies time, with West Indies awarded five penalty runs, but shortly after the Sri Lankan team took to the field, walked back towards the boundary line, refusing to play. Well, all the saga coming out from the match will be on www.newsfirst.lk and also on our primetime news bulletin later on. With that, we move on to news from uh, the political arena. Now, the team of 16 SLFP members who resigned from their ministerial positions held a public meeting in Mathale today. As all of you are aware, the central bank was subject to a massive robbery. Interest rates that were at 8 or 9 percent those days have gone up to 16 or 17 percent today. The giants of the UNP are involved in this. What is the policy of the UNP? Is it to sell as much resources of the country as possible and live off of it? We are today in need of creating an SLFP-led government. When there was complete approval by the cabinet for the renovation of the oil tanks, Ronald Vikramasinghe has stopped it with another cabinet paper. Today the country is functioning according to the tunes of various individuals and we are burdened with loans. According to newspaper reports, certain countries are waiting to influence the appointments of presidential candidates. Do we agree to all of this? We need to make Mahindra Rajapaksa and Maitri Palasiri Sena join hands and make a government in this country. I must tell you that if we do not make Mahindra Rajapaksa the Prime Minister, it would expedite the end of this country. Though certain individuals worked in support of Mahindra Rajapaksa, they are some unclean people, especially from Gampaha. It is not Sudarshini. Because of this unclean water, the entire ocean is polluted. That unclean water canal was washed away to the United States. At a time where the SLFP was raising its head again, the local government elections came about. Now the government and the 23 have come back and we asked them to find a single house that is not against the government. Even if you visit the house of a cabinet minister, you will find people in the house against the government. With the no confidence motion, what we tried to do was build a government with our own prime minister. But our very own people didn't take the step forward. If you are against the government, if you are against the UNP and Ranul Vikramasinghe, and if you are ready to send Ranil's government home, we will join hands with all these forces and take the step forward for a massive journey. The central bank robbery took place as soon as the government was established. A robbery of this nature has never taken place in this country. Who takes these decisions? Is it the Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe? When the robbery was taking place, who goes there? Chairman of the UNP, Minister Malik Samad of Ikrama, General Secretary of the UNP, Kabir Hashim, former Finance Minister Ravi Karna Naika, who was drooling over money. It is the UNP that told the President to remove Ranil and appoint another Prime Minister. What did Ranil Vikramasinghe say from the time he came to power? The country is burdened with loans. There is no money to pay the loans, so we cannot do anything. Now, last week, he is saying it is a bad time of the people. Should a leader of the country say something like that? Why don't we send all these people out of the government and make our own government? The Prime Minister is now identified as the mastermind behind the central bank robbery. There is one thing in this country that is not going to change, and that is the leadership of the UNP. Minister Manu Ganeshan attended an event to distribute school equipment among school students of St. Anne's Girls School in North Colombo. Now, the minister expressed the following views to the media during the event. Hey. The group of 16 is now helpless. They had open invitations before the no-confidence motion. They were asked to cross. They did. They said the salon door is now open. They were deceived. When they went there, they saw that the salon door was shut. They have used a Chinese paddock. Now they are knocking on the door. They are ringing the bell, but no one comes to open it. Out of the 16 people, except for two people, there is a situation where the other people cannot go to parliament. Do not ask me who they are. I will tell you later. This is the truth. 
The foundation stone for the new kidney unit at the Hambantara General Hospital was laid today under the auspices of Health Minister Dr. Rajatasaran Ratna and Deputy Leader of the United National Party, Minister Sajid Premadasa. The estimated cost for the new kidney unit is 219 million rupees. We were looking at loan repayments. We realized that we need to pay a lot more than our income. While the government is paying all these loans, Sajid Premadasa is building houses for the people. During the time of his father, many benefits including Jana Savia, houses for the poor and teaching appointments were granted to the people. Now the media is attacking us immensely. Did they do this earlier? If they did, they would have got a beating in the morning. Today, even the president is attacked. Things that they could not do during the previous government are being covered today. I must state with great disappointment that there is a severe shortage of doctors in the Deborahava hospital. The Deborahava doctors are now slowly becoming a political problem by not heeding to the orders of the ministry. By creating a shortage of doctors, they intend on carrying out political conspiracies through them. <laughs> Journalists questioned the former General Secretary of the United National Party regarding the appointment of new Deputy Ministers. In truth, the appointment of new Ministers, new Deputy Ministers as well as monitoring MPs is a burden to the country. This does not provide anything to the people of the country. What do the people of the country want? They want some form of relief. It is difficult for people to live. The cost of living has gone up. The income methods have collapsed. In addition to this, if the people are going to be burdened further, that is going to be a huge problem. The floods caused a lot of damage during the past few weeks. When one area is suffering, there is a supplementary estimate that is tabled in Parliament to purchase vehicles and office equipment. Minister of Finance and Mass Media Mangla Samaravira expressed the following views at an event to grant compensation to those affected by the floods in the Mathur area. After 11 years, we are increasing the salaries of the employees of the country. We remember the 2010 presidential election. The president back then beat his chest and vowed that the salaries of state sector employees will be increased by 2,500 rupees. They were in power. Four years lapsed and they couldn't even increase the salary by a cent. We have to remember that our government came into power and we increased the salary in the first 100 days. On the other hand, when you go to private hospitals, the value-added tax is being charged. That is true. We will remove that tax from next week. You pay more taxes than the large-scale professionals. That is the truth. There are 22,000 VAVAs in the country. We will begin renovating 1,957 starting this year. We will use the Triforces. We have spoken to the Army Commander, Air Force Commander and Navy Commander and the Defense Secretary. They are now ready for the development as well. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksa declared open the new Sangavasa constructed at the Ananda Bodhi Hermitage in the Thalli at the area in Varakapola. The cost of living is increasing daily. Now the rulers think it is sufficient if the people have three meals a day. It has come to a situation where they do not have an issue even if the people of this country are starving. They are not doing anything else other than creating issues within the government and taking political revenge. Nothing new is being done. A municipal councillor was shot dead. A deputy chairman of the Pradesh Sabha was shot dead. The chief incumbent Thera of Kataragama was shot at. This is the situation. The Inspector General of Police is meditating. Well, now speaking in Monaragali yesterday, Minister of Education Akhilaviraj Karyavasim said that the ministry intends on making certain changes with regards to subjects of the GCE ordinary level examination. Possible for students to select subjects and move forward. We have made many such changes. We are planning on reducing the nine subjects in the National Education Institute to six. Teachers are unable to teach certain subjects. Some syllabuses cannot be covered in one year. So we have decided to take out unnecessary sections and include the areas which would be useful for the future. 
We hope to make these necessary changes soon. Anunayaka of the Malvatu chapter of the Siam sect, Most Venerable Dimbul Kumbure Vimala Dharmathera, responded to this statement during a discussion with former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa. They are planning on reducing subjects such as Buddhism, literature and history from the ordinary level examination. After removing these subjects, do they believe that they are able to teach these using other methods? Well, on the following is a debate that arose at a seminar in Colombo yesterday regarding the Sri Lanka-Singapore free trade agreement not being published in all three languages. Professionals who are for and against particular FDA as well as representatives of the government were present at the seminar. The international agreements have to be published in English. There are no copies available in the Sinhala and Tamil languages. When this is tabled in Parliament, at least 80% will not be able to read and understand it. Do you think it is fair to do this in this manner? Without an interpretation in Sinhalese, you are the only person talking on behalf of this. We would like the competition in industries where there is a monopoly. Since there are injustices in the Sri Lankan medical system, people have to get into flights and travel to Bangalore, Chennai and Hyderabad. When we are looking at the law of the country, we do have to translate it into Sinhalese. But when you translate something that is this complex, there are people who cannot even read the English version and understand it. When we talk about our election, they approve this without any proper knowledge. They do not know the mechanism and they do not understand the complexity of this when they recommend things i understand your question even the fecal matter of singaporean people will be brought to sri lanka pits have been dug for this in aruakaru the feces are to be buried in these fecal matter from singapore as well as medical waste from singapore will be brought to sri lanka this waste cannot be recycled the country is receiving a large sum of money for this but the leaders of the country must think that this is not somalia or nigeria this is Sri Lanka. Well, now the Northwestern Province Environmental Authority says the granting of the environmental protection license for the Nurachuri coal power plant will be reviewed next week. A spokesperson of the authority said the review committee of the Nurachuri coal power plant will convene next week and hold discussions regarding the matter. The spokesperson added that the consideration will be done by the review committee as per request made after a discussion held at the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy. The issuing of environmental protection license to the Norochole coal power plant by the Northwestern Provincial Environmental Authority was stopped mid last year as a result of the environmental pollution that is caused by the power plant. The Ministry of Power and Energy says a foundation stone to construct a wind barrier will be laid next week. This will be done as a solution to the existing environmental problems at the plant. School equipment was distributed among underprivileged children at the auditorium of the Dehiovit Divisional Secretary. Today, former Minister Basil Rajpaksa attended the event. Why aren't these children being given a mango plant at the very least? Now I might even have to go to the FCID for distributing these. Venerable Thera, I go to court daily after distributing these items. Cases have been filed, not that I accepted bribes, but for soliciting them. I gave away GI pipes. If you have GI pipes, you better keep them. They are court items now. Our secretary was sent in for distributing silk cloth. Well, Deputy Minister of Transport Ashok Abe Singer convened a media briefing today. We obtained cabinet approval for 500 buses. 400 buses with 54 seats and 100 buses with 100 seats. We have held discussions with foreign investors to bring in 2,000 buses that are suitable for urban areas. We are trying out steps to get these buses down using the finance of our investors. What is the value of these buses? It will be around 50 million US dollars. The 50 buses will cost 20 million US dollars. It is through a credit line extended by India, so we are able to call tenders only from India. We have held initial discussions with two investors to bring 2,000 buses with a low footboard. They are going to spend their money and bring it down, and they will provide those buses to the SLTB after 10 years. They will obtain a portion of the income, and another portion will come into the SLTB. 
The employees of the SLTB will be working in these buses. For Muslim devotees across the island celebrate the festival of Ramazan today. The celebrations focus on devotion and brotherhood. The Ramazan festival begins after the new moon is sighted following the fast conducted during the month of Ramazan. Ramazan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and is observed by Muslims worldwide as a month of fasting to commemorate the first revelation of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad according to the Islamic belief. This annual observance is regarded as one of the five pillars in Islam. A large crowd attended the prayers at the Colombo Grand Mosque. Allah. 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 A special prayer session was held at the golf face screen today. This is how the Muslim devotees in Ampara, Kilinochi and Vaunia celebrated the Ramazan festival. Well, you're tuned on to primetime news. Still in news at home, one person was injured after a firearm belonging to a policeman went off during a raid that was carried out to arrest a drug peddler traveling in a bus. Based on a tip off received that narcotics are being transported by bus, two officers attached to the Polonarua Police Special Raids Unit had boarded the bus flying from Colombo to Kaduruela. The two officers had boarded the bus from Habrana. The police said that there had been a scuffle between an officer and a drug peddler who was travelling in the bus. The drug peddler was injured after the weapon belonging to the police officer went off accidentally. The police media spokesperson added that two drug peddlers were arrested and that 10 packets of heroin were found in their possession. The injured suspect was admitted to the Polonarua base hospital. The other suspect is under police custody. The Police Narcotics Bureau has taken into custody a consignment of Kerala cannabis weighing more than 232 kilograms last night while being transported from Mana to Colombo. The consignment which has been transported in a small lorry was taken into custody in the Valsar area. It was in the month of January that the Police Narcotics Bureau received information on this racket. The raid was a result of this. The stock of cannabis is valued at 27.8 million rupees. We have arrested three individuals. One is an Indian national, while the other two are residents of Pesale. Restraining orders were obtained for seven days after all three suspects were produced before the Vatala magistrate. Well, thank you, Charlene, for that update. Now, as we come to a close, though many abide by road signs in the presence of the police, there are many instances when motorists don't follow them. What adverse impact can it have? We leave you tonight with some visuals that would make you think twice before you break road rules. I'm Joel Outskun. Good night.